so yeah, we need to load up this notebook and then bring up the spark in order to find him. Okay. Lab 1, searching for a clue. We were able to acquire, legally of course, the cell phone records from the Las Vegas cell, cell tower that was closest to where we lost our friend. The records contain call information which includes the GPS coordinates of where the calls were made. We know our friend went missing and he has a cell phone, an Apple one to be exact, and it seems to get a ton of use. There's got to be some record in this data set that gives us a clue to help find our friend. Maybe we can find out where he has been the last day. Let's analyze the records and make use of the data we have and see if we can do some visualizations to uncover the first piece of our puzzle. This is a notebook based environment called Zeppelin. It works with a set of interpreters in an interactive environment. You essentially can run the notebook, you'll be able to you know, produce the results and then it can return back directly to this interface. What we're seeing now is a markdown paragraph which is just an HTML like text based paragraph. You prefix each paragraph or note with the interpreter you like to run. In this case, we're using the percent %MD for Markdown. Task. You're, you are to go through this notebook and follow the instructions in either the Markdown paragraphs or the actual Spark paragraphs. You will run the paragraphs by clicking the play button to the right of each paragraph. Running a Markdown paragraph will just print the text onto the results pane. The technology is used. We're going to be using Zeppelin. We're going to be using Spark and Hadoop and we're going to be running some Linux and shell commands and R and Google Viz for visualization using Google Maps. The next step is to download the data set into our file system. We're going to be using shell commands so I prefix our note with %sh and then we are going to run the wget command with some parameters here we're going to download it as a cell phone underscore records .csv file from this location here. To run this note, just go ahead and click on the play button in the upper right corner of a particular note. This will initiate and do the download. Okay. Let's verify that the file was downloaded. Again, this will be a shell command or shell um, syntax. We will do a listing of this directory to see if our cell phone records CSV file was downloaded, and indeed it was. The next series of steps will be to load our dataset into the Hadoop file system. Again, we're looking at markdown text here. This paragraph or the note is just to show that the instructions of what we're going to do explaining some of the context of what we want to do. First, we're going to load this file from the local file system into the HDFS directory. And this will be the command to do so. HDFS DFS dash put you specify the local location and then the HDFS location. Then we'll verify that the file was downloaded. So again, we're doing a listing of the HDFS directory. However, before we do that, let's make sure that our um, any existing files are removed. So we just put in a little um, remove script here or, or the remove command to ensure that we're cleaning up our workspace. Okay, so let's get right into running the actual shell commands. Again, these are all shell scripts or shell commands. HDFS, DFS, let's go ahead and remove the any existing files and then we will put the file that we downloaded into HDFS and then we do a listing of our HDFS, HDFS directory to ensure the file was successfully loaded. Click play. Okay, indeed this file was um, placed into our HDFS, which is what we were expecting. Now, to begin working with Spark, you need to create a data frame. And with Zeppelin, a SQL context has been initialized for you automatically. So you don't need to declare or initialize this up front. Just go ahead and use SQL context 
and what we're doing here is appending a series of um, actions or I should say a series of transformations to get this file loaded into a data frame we are going to use databricks spark.csv library this will format the file and we are opting to keep the headers of that file in this data frame so there will be header rows and we're using the load operation to bring in the CSV file and we might as well cache this so that we don't need to redo it next time we want to invoke the file so let's go ahead and click run the first time you run an operation it may take a little longer so we'll just go ahead and let it run so it took about two minutes to run but again this was the first time running a job after the Zeppelin and the Embari services have started next time will be a lot faster for sure so now we're going to invoke a data frame dot show which will show the content of this data frame so here is the content of our CSV file our call logs um, you can see the call ID account number cell number timestamp call duration in minutes device of the phone call location in latitude and longitude coordinates and this is everything we have in the CSV so we haven't done anything too fancy we just loaded the data into a data frame and got it to display if you're just curious and you want to see the schema you can go ahead and invoke df.printschema it just prints out essentially the schema of this data frame for you so let's take a look at the number of different phones that are available so we'll select from this data frame and we're going to look at the device column this is how you would um, call or select from a column you do DF and then put it in parentheses and double quotes the column name and then we're going to show the first 100 records okay you can see the number of different devices that were captured in this cell phone record let's take this a little bit further and get a count or count the number of the types of cell phones in this data set to do that we need to filter this data frame by the column the device column and specify it by each of the individual cell phone models and then we do a count on each of them this will return in each row in the order that we call the function the number of Apple cell phones, Samsung cell phones, LG, Motorola, and Blackberry so we know our friend went missing after the 19th of October so we can use this knowledge to filter our statement further so we do that by creating a new data frame we'll call it df underscore filtered and let's use the filter operation once more to grab our data that has the timestamp that is greater than October 19th 2016 this will return only the pertinent information that we need from the days our friend went missing at this point you know we're only doing transformation activities so that nothing actually returns back spark just gives you a pointer to what the data frame looks like in terms of a schema now let's register two of these um, data frames that we've been working with so that we can use Spark SQL. So the first step here is I'm registering a temp table called cell phone of our original data set and now I'm going to register our cell phone underscore f which is, represents our filtered data frame I should say not data set. So by registering these two we can now run SQL on it. So in this next paragraph here I will prefix this paragraph with the percent sql to represent the interpreter and i will just run a simple select all statement of our cell phone table so 
sometimes you need to toggle back and forth between the graph and a table so that it shows up not always though but if, sometimes you have to do that so again this is just a different view and this shows you that we can run a number of SQL queries on this table now so by default Zeppelin has this visualization capability which can be very useful and you'll see a bit later on so now let's find the count of the devices from our filtered data set again running a slightly different SQL um, we're going to grab a count from this cell phone dash cell phone underscore F table and we're going to group by device this is just to show that we can run a bit more sophisticated uh, query other than a select all and in this case we can use the visualization to our advantage we can see clearly from this chart here which cell phone was more um, common within our data set so I want to create a new data frame but this time filtering just the Apple devices because we know that our friend has an Apple iPhone and we went ahead and ran the show command to show that only the Apple devices were created as part of this new data frame so now the next thing I want to do here is essentially create a data frame of formatted columns so that I can insert it into a Google Viz visualization library that I'm going to use. We are working with the latest data frame of our guy or the friend and we're grabbing a number of columns but in particular I want to concatenate the latitude and the longitude column as a location, a single location column. This will kind of prepare and set me up for the input parameters required by the Google Viz library that I will use later. Just to ensure that I've done it correctly, I'll take a quick look at this final data frame. And there it is, this new location column has the parameters or the values as the library needs. So before we proceed further, we want to you know, make sure that again the workspace is clean, that there is no existing file of our data frame that CSV because what we're going to do is export this CSV file out into our HDFS that way we can load it in to a R um, data frame so that we can work with Google Viz just another example of how um, general purpose Spark can be in working with other languages so now we're going to write this data frame df underscore final out into HDFS we're grabbing all the partition data into one and I'm going to write and format it as a CSV file keeping the headers and then providing this file name okay um, this removing existing file code is there if you need to but this is our first time um, I don't need to rerun it again this is just to ensure that we don't have that file on the system so let's go ahead and grab that file from the HDFS and place it on our um, local file system put it under root slash BDD and then the R data frame is where we will use to load the file first let's set the working directory for R we're using an R interpreter this time and then we will read the CSV file into this R data frame we'll go ahead and inspect the columns of this newly created R data frame just to make sure it is the right data frame that we imported so we can see that the columns are the same ones that we saw earlier but again more importantly we have our location column that we created now the next step involves obtaining your own Google Maps API key this is the site that you can use to generate your own key this API key is needed for rendering your Google Map 
So I placed my own Google key within this um, this request right here, URL, and then go ahead and run it. This will set the key via JavaScript. So now that the notebook and the browser is aware of this, we can plot the GPS coordinates from our data frame using the Google Viz library. So this is our code right here. We're going to use this Google Viz library. We're going to plot our data frame and we're going to pass in the cell phone number and our location column as the latitude and longitude for the map. This code here will render the map and we are passing in these two columns again, the ones that we've defined with a bunch of options for rendering the map. And then finally just go ahead and invoke the print command to render this map. So we press play to run this map and it will show up with all the coordinates plotted on a Google map. These are all the coordinates of our friend or more importantly our friend is within these coordinates of all the Apple devices. All the Apple devices after October 19th if you recall. At this point, let's drill down further and filter out everyone except our friend's phone number. This will make it so that the map has uh, fewer coordinates and then we can slowly start to identify where our friend has been. So we're plotting the essentially the same, it's the same code using this new data frame of our friend. And you can see that there are seven coordinate points now, much easier to identify. Now what we do know is that our friend went missing on the 23rd. So let's take a look at these coordinates on paper to say and see exactly which coordinates were after the 23rd, on or after the 23rd, and filter out even further. So we see that there's one entry here on the 23rd of October, another one down here, and finally one more at the very bottom. So by moving over to the map and clicking on each of the coordinates, you can see the dates on it. Each of those dates will tell you which points in particular we're looking at. And so by seeing where or when the points were um, plotted. Let's zoom in, use the map, and figure out exactly where each of these coordinates are located. So let's try to find the coordinates that were after 1023, October 23rd. So here's one. This one was on the 23rd and it looks like it was made around 10.48 p.m. Okay. Zooming in tells us that this is at the Mandalay Bay. So he made his first call at the Mandalay Bay since he went missing. Let's take a look at another coordinate. Remember we only want the one that is on the 23rd after. That's on the 21st. This other one here is also October 23rd, a little later into the night. Where did he end up now? What? Are you kidding me? No way. Really? Yeah. Strange. Yes. Las Vegas Police Department. How'd he end up there? Alright, there should be one more point. Let's see here. This one is on the 24th, the following morning. Could it be? The county detention center. What was our friend up to? Hmm. Hey, thank you for watching. So now we know Scott made a call from Mandalay Bay, from the police station, and from the detention center. If you want to find out what happens, click here to go to lab 2. If you just want to know the ending and spoil it for yourselves, go ahead and click there. But more importantly, subscribe to us and click down here. Thank you, and I'll see you guys next time.